So this is the R for Data Science uh, Advanced R uh, Book Club. Um, and uh, my name is Kevin Kent. Uh, I'm kind of helping to wrangle this book club and get it organized. Um, but I think, uh, as I said, like, as we move forward, I think we'll all kind of take ownership and, you know, present and do different things. And I, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, so uh, just some basics about uh, the book club. Um, we'll be meeting uh, uh, each week, or we can actually talk about that if you don't want to meet each week, but uh, each week to discuss a different chapter of the Advanced R book by Hadley Wickham. Um, at this time on Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 6.30 Central. Um, just like today, uh, we'll be recording each session, so if you can't make it, no worries. Um, it's meant to be, you know, a learning experience and something that's, not, you know, not a ton of pressure. It doesn't feel like homework, but um, so, you know, if you can't attend or, you know, you're busy one week, that's fine. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, just to set those expectations. And then um, the slides and schedule will be posted. Um, so when whoever presents each week, you know, does their slides, it'll be posted on the advanced star repo. Um, and so uh, it'd be great if the people who are presenting could like actually just, you know, do a pull request and add it, add their, um, you know, their content and the slides. And I actually did that for this one, this meeting, but uh, I did it a little bit late. So it's not uh, merged in yet to the repo, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, so you, you guys will likely be interacting with the repo uh, to do stuff like that. Um, you can also share questions, observations, and anything else on the, obviously on the Advanced Star Book Club channel. Um, and, you know, and uh, uh, share, you know, code, questions. Uh, if you're working on something that's related to what we're doing or whatever, uh, that, that's a place to do it. And the first cohort that's just finishing up that TAN is a part of um, uh, is, um, it created a really amazing book down, uh, product uh, for uh, kind of questions that they that they uh, came up along the on, along their kind of path through each chapter with some answers to them. Um, and so I hope to uh, kind of collect our questions as we go along and to add to that. Um, but I think it'll also serve as a really great reference for us uh, as we're going through. Because um, I think likely a lot of our questions will be like questions that they came up came up in, the, in their group. Um, and then they also have a really great uh, Zer Zerigan, I, I really don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, <laughs> is, there, is that is that right? Zerian, Zeringan. Um, if anyone knows, okay. Um, uh, template for markdown slides. So whenever you know whoever's presenting each week, um, there's this template already created. Um, so I created these in Google Slides, but um, anyone can you know use that template and create their slides in our markdown with that template. Any questions so far? All right. So today, uh, I like to just you know spend a decent amount of some time introducing ourselves, uh, our goals for the book club. I'll give just a really brief introduction, some content uh, from the introduction of the book. Um, talk about what you need for the book club. Uh, discuss like how often we want to meet and what are what the, we want the format to be. Um, and see if anyone wants to sign up to present for the next two weeks. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about chapter two. Um, so I like to just uh, have everyone, you know, go around and just say a little bit about who you are and what your goal is for participating, uh, why you're participating or what's interesting about this to you. And maybe if you've like participated in other book clubs in the past, uh, what, you know, you liked about them or what they did well or something like that. Um, and so I'll go, I can go first. Uh, so as I said, my name is Kevin. Um, I, the reason why I'm interested in this, um, so I work in data science and uh, one reason why I'm interested in this book is because I often come across problems that uh, I have to reference this book for and I've never actually read it cover to cover and I think I'm missing a whole lot of big pieces or connections between these concepts. And, um, and so I realized like if I'm coming to this book all the time, I should probably sit down and read it. And I think it would just be fun to do with a lot of a bunch of other people who are kind of doing the same thing. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of why I joined and uh, you know, um, yeah, I hope to learn more about kind of the deeper inner workings of R and um, you know, objects that I, that you use. So um, anyone want to go to next? Uh, 
Hey guys, this is uh, Eric, Eric Knoxted from Orlando. I'm, this is my first book club. I'm, two reasons I'm participating. One, I want a community of our users. I want to uh, get to know people like you guys. And number two is I, I'm looking for that deeper understanding of R um, to progress in using, using the language to solve problems. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Josh Holt Um I'm out of Boston, and uh, I work as a statistician, so I, I use R pretty much every day. But I first learned R long enough ago that tidy wasn't a thing, and a lot of the great, wonderful functionality we have now. So I think to myself, normally there's got to be a better way, and I think that's the main thing I'm trying to hopefully learn is what are the simpler or more efficient ways to do a lot of this stuff. Um, and getting to know more people with this would be great. Uh, I know a couple of people who also work in, um, in sports like I do who did the first one. So I'm, I'm kind of excited by the, the process of, you know, improving myself to be at their level. Josh, where did you say you live? Sorry. Uh, in Boston. Oh, okay. I'm in Boston as well. I forgot. Oh, cool. Uh, Beverly, North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah. yeah, I live in Brookline. Oh, cool. All right, uh, thanks. Uh, just whoever wants to go next. Yeah, um, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Vatshresh. I uh, just recently graduated uh, from my undergrad and work as a data analyst for an agricultural technology company. I taught myself R about two years ago uh, for an econometrics class because I didn't want to pay to use Stata and really loved R um, and actually used uh, Blogdown to create my website. Um, and so I just want to learn more and uh, see if I can um, build some cool projects or apply it to my work. Yeah. Okay, so my name is, jo is George. You can call me George. I'm from Brazil. And I've been using R for some years. And I've actually read some pieces of the book. There is like some problems that the only reference it seems to be this book. We uh, always go back to it. But I never sit down to read it properly, so I think this book club would be a great chance to do it. Great, thanks. Hi, uh, I'm Bovisha, uh, and I'm undergrad. Uh, I go to school in Nebraska, but I'm recently located in Pittsburgh. Uh, and like Eric said, I've got like two reasons. Uh, and two goals basically for participating in this book club. One of them is like getting to know people and another is uh, developing my R skills and having a deeper understanding of, uh, of how R actually works. So yeah. Hi, my name is Jake. I live in Philly and I'm a data analyst at the Children's Hospital. Um, I've been using R for about six years and I've been doing a lot of package building lately and I'm getting into some meta programming and I, I don't know what I'm doing. So it'd be really nice to just get a group of peers who I can bounce ideas around with and, and just instead of just throwing stuff at the wall trying to see what sticks, I, I want to know what it is I'm doing and, and why I'm doing it. Yeah, uh, so my name is Shamsuddin from Nigeria. So I always love bringing together the ideas really stick more better in my memory. So I joined this book club so that uh, I can learn together with other people. Yeah, thank you. I think that's everybody. I'm Tan. Um, I probably won't be, I was part of the first uh, cohort of this book club. Um, I just figured I had some spare time, so I figured I'd join in. I'm a data analyst and developer for a home builder in Ottawa, Canada. Um, I spend a lot of time on the Slack and um, answer kind of a lot. Um, but uh, one of a few things are really like, it's really interesting just kind of like getting into the advanced R, like the programming bits of things. Like it's like the first part kind of seems boring, but it really does build going forward um, and understanding things like environments and functions like um, has really helped me 
um, and then just like starting to apply things from there into your projects right away actually really kind of helped um, with my understanding of what was going on. So really encourage you guys to do that, um, present. Um, if you're comfortable live coding, um, making mistakes on camera means you've got, it's like pair programming, you've got like eight other people who will instantly tell you you've done something wrong. Um, but it's all, it's a really great way to learn and um, really looking forward to, you know, more people enjoying this and um, it's a really great process. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Tan. Thanks, everyone else. Uh, that was yeah, that was super kind of helpful insight from someone who's gone through this uh, recently. Uh, so thanks. Uh, all right. And everyone went, right? Pretty sure. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So a little bit about the book. Um, so like I said, I actually haven't read it cover to cover, um, but I've kind of picked up bits and pieces of it as some of you have mentioned you did as well. Um, but, you know, just from reading through the introduction and kind of the first part of the book, Hadley Wickham, I think, talks about a lot of what we, some of what you said about, you know, kind of getting new tools to solve problems and to really understand kind of the language um, uh, in a deeper way. Um, and, I think that's, it sounds like to me when I read, uh, you know, Hadley's uh, preface and introduction, that's kind of what he um, aims to do with this book and to make R as painless and, uh, you know, useful for you as possible. So, um, and, uh, you know, from Hadley as well, uh, what we'll learn, well, we'll be familiar with the foundations of R. Uh, so complex data types, um, how functions work, what functional programming means and why it's useful. Uh, R is different object-oriented systems. Um, I think a couple of you mentioned metaprogramming, so that's a big part of this book. I believe it's a section. Um, uh, so kind of understand what that is and uh, how to use it. Um, you know, creating functions that use tidy evaluation um, and also the kind of the pitfalls of it. And then uh, have good intuition for which operations are in R are slow or use a lot of memory and, and why that is. Um, and that's from the introduction. Um, but uh, yeah, just a kind of general overview of the, the goals of, of the main concepts of you know, the book. Um, and so the book is divided up into five sections. Uh, so after this introduction, there's uh, foundations, functional programming, object-oriented programming, metaprogramming, and techniques. Um, so yeah, so metaprogramming is a section, um, and then each chapter is structured in like a pretty similar way. So each chapter has an introduction with the main kind of topic and goal of the chapter, um, purpose of the chapter. There's always a, a pre-quiz. So, um, that quiz is like at the beginning of the chapter to the end of the chapter. Um, basically I think it's in the book, it's kind of framed as if you can do this quiz, then you don't need to read it. But I, I like it. I think it's helpful. Uh, to try it out and see what you can do beforehand and then it helps you kind of focus your reading as you go in. So I think they're really helpful. Um, uh, there's a chapter outline, prerequisites, so sometimes you have to solve, you know, a package or two um, and that's there and then obviously the content and then the quiz answers. So that pre-quiz uh, answers are there. Um, and so some helpful things that I, I think are helpful, uh, a couple of these top two come from the book, um, but uh, these are just like suggestions or things to think about as you're, as you're reading. Um, so Hadley talks about reading, the importance of reading source code, so not being afraid to go into your packages that you're using, um, you know, and try to really understand, uh, um, uh, you know, how a certain function is, is uh, written and how it's working and why it might be failing for you or producing errors, et cetera. Um, really not being afraid to go into the source code. And then a scientific mindset of, you know, trying things, um, you know, experimenting and then kind of iterating and, and um, you know, um, not being afraid to go through the cycles of, of, of uh, you know, proposing something, trying it out, testing it, and, and modifying it. Um, and then what I would suggest, or at least think about, is trying the quiz, like I said, each chapter, to answer the focus questions and, and answer the focus questions. So I actually came up with some, like, questions to help 
like guide thinking if you want it for the second chapter, uh, the one that we would read for next week. Um, and so I'll try to do that every week um, or whoever's presenting, if you're interested in doing that, you can do that as well. Um, but just to kind of give you something to think about and focus on as you're going through, and I'll show those in a second, um, the ones that came up but for, the, for next week. Um, but, uh, but yeah, make sure as you're going through to write down and ask questions in the Slack um, or just write, write down the questions for yourself. Connect you know, what you're th learning and thinking to you know, projects you've worked on in the past or um, kind of other similar techniques or, or you know, oh, this is a new way of approaching a problem that I didn't know how to solve before, stuff like that. Um, that'll be most likely helpful for you. Um, and then obviously, like when you finish the chapter, try to answer the quiz. Quiz. Um, an another way uh, to kind of consolidate the information is like summarizing the chapter. Uh, in the previous cohort, I saw um, Maya, um, who was like the facilitator there, kind of uh, diagramming the concepts each chapter, and I thought that was really neat. Um, so you can even do that for yourself. You know, after you're done with the chapter, try to like map out the concepts, kind of either in diagram or verbally. And try to do it, you know, without like looking back and reading and just trying to see what you can come up with. Um, it's kind of a fun exercise to uh, really make those connections stick uh, from things that you've learned. Um, uh, but again, these are just suggestions, things that you, um, um, you know, uh, you know, can consider if they're helpful for you. But obviously, whatever is most useful for you. And then uh, I, I would suggest also periodically revisiting the quiz questions and like the content from previous chapters. So um, you'll likely, as you move along, have different ways of approaching things that you saw or to see things in a different way uh, in, in the past chapters. And so, um, you know, just revisiting it and kind of spiraling that in is a, is a uh, helpful thing uh, for, for some people. Um, okay. Okay, and then what you need for the book club, uh, you really just need to install R in R Studio. Um, I have links there. I, I would guess that a lot of people have already done that, but if not, that's okay too. Um, and then uh, we're also, there aren't many, as far as I can tell, packages that are added along the way, um, but there are definitely a few, a couple. And um, you know, if you ever need to, just use the install.packages uh, uh, call and you, know, and, um, you should be able to add it. Um, okay. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, the session frequency and format. Um, uh, this can go in a lot of different ways. Uh, and so I think the first I'd like to talk about is like, what, how often do you guys want to meet? Like if um, you all want to meet, like if, uh, if you want to meet kind of on this regular weekly schedule and do a chapter a week, uh, I'd be okay with that, but I think we should talk about that. So um, what, do you, what do you all think about kind of the weekly cadence? I'm hoping for weekly. Well, that'd be preferable from my perspective. Okay. Weekly works for me. Uh, you know, I think as long as we have uh, the majority of people for a week, we should we should progress as if we're running a weekly. Yeah, I think uh, I was looking for it to be weekly as well, so that works for me. Great. Yeah, we weekly works for me as well. Great. Okay. Well, go with majority weekly. Yeah, it seems like pretty much everyone I've heard from. So like, yeah. Okay. And it's much pretty the same way the previous codes. Yeah, I think that's what they did as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it seems to be it seemed to work for them, and uh, yeah, I think if, if it works for our schedules, I think we should do it. So, all right, that sounds good. I think so. We have a consensus there. I think with that sounds like. All right, I think we heard from everyone. All right, um, and then uh, my next question is, uh, do we want a consistent structure for the sessions or leave it, up, leave it up to the facilitator? And so like the idea, at least how the other cohort did this, is that, um, you know, like, like the facilitator can present, I guess, I can present whenever there isn't anyone to, to present or I want to present or whatever, or I sign up. Um, but, uh, but it'd be great if we, you know, had a rotation of, of presentations um, and if we do that like we could have a consistent kind of format let's say for instance uh, you know someone 
summarizes or talks about the concepts in the chapter, what stood out to them, et cetera. And then you have time to like discuss or maybe work through some code or live code as Tan said. Um, like that's kind of a example format, but um, just like to open it up, do we, do we think that we need to kind of plan that now or just see how it goes with different people facilitating? I'm definitely open to facilitating and I'd be more, much more comfortable. This is Eric. I'd yep. be more, more comfortable if we did have like a set structure. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think consistency is probably gonna make this easier for everyone uh, in terms of you can kind of focus on the content rather than um, how you're gonna present it. Mm -hmm. If, if that works and it's not too much of a hassle to make it consistent, then we should just do that. Uh, Kevin, if you have you know a rough structure in mind and uh, it kind of lends from the learnings of the last cohort, then that seems like a good way to start. Okay, that's good. Uh, anyone else? I think it's. I thought. I thought having a structure was helpful. Um, even just you know like. Something like 20 minutes to present the content um, of the chapter, um, and then like 40 minutes to discuss. Um, often the content gets heavy enough that you'll need like 30 or 40 minutes to present it, um, and sometimes longer, right? So, um, but usually I think 20 minutes, like just to present the content itself um, or something related to the content um, as you, you can, I think like having a structure like that, where it's like, okay, so you've got 20 minutes to fill, um, if that sort of like prevent, prevents nerves and such, it, it doesn't have to be a long presentation, um, but some, some people are more comfortable with long presentations that kind of go into detail, kind of like, like a teaching mode. Um, so it's really up to the presenter in that sense. Um, it's kind of facilitator, you're kind of being Kevin here, but I would suggest that, you know, you have, the structure where okay, just read me back the stuff that's in the um, in the chapter, um, and then we can go over anything that doesn't make sense, or anyone has questions about, or anything that's open like that. Um, you know, I actually pretty notoriously like never recap the chapter. Um, I always end up like okay, so I assume that we all read the chapter, which is actually an assumption you should make, um, but. You know, like I kind of go, okay, so here's like what I thought the chapter was about, and here's how I would use it, is how I approach it as well. Um, so that having that flexibility has been good. I think we all learn a little bit seeing it in action as much as we do seeing the content and explained, right? So um, having that flexibility kind of makes um, makes a difference, but it also kind of gives a nice little nest egg, a nest like structure, so that you don't have to leave that if you're not comfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, that's helpful. Um, yeah. Uh, so anyone else, by the way, before I, I just you know, summarize a few things that we said. Yeah, on top of what uh, has already been said, um, uh, I'm not quite sure if we, uh, what really the experience of the previous cohort, what they said about uh, the structure, which one works better for all the members in the group, which one all the members in the group feel like it goes well with everyone. I don't know if there is anyone here that uh, attend and they have like uh, a better approach of doing that as well. Yeah, uh, Tan is actually in the current code. Ah, okay, okay. Or the previous, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, you guys are welcome to obviously do it as you guys, you know, as, as you guys get comfortable with it, I think you'll start getting more comfortable with ad-libbing um, and or like live presentations and or live coding. Um, just here's our studio, here's something that we can do with it and move on. Um, but definitely as you guys get comfortable, especially like, you know, sort of like the, before you really know each other, before you know, like, you know, who's asking all the questions and how do you have, you know, how, where's that experience group kind of comes from. It's, it's helpful to have like content happy to start. And then as you get comfortable, um, you know, some of the other stuff gets really cool and really fun to present. Great. That's all that's helpful to know. Um, all right, anyone else that we, I missed? Uh, 
right. So, I mean, it sounds like, uh, you know, it'd be really helpful for a lot of us to have a structure, at least that we can choose to use uh, and kind of default to if we want to. Um, so I'll, I'll be happy to kind of sketch up something based on what we just said and um, some what I've heard from the previous core and just some thoughts I've had. Um, and then I could send that around to you all like on Slack or something and then we could take a look at it and see if, it, if it's what you had in mind. Does that sound good? Uh, thumbs up or? Yep. Oh yeah, that sounds good, man. Okay. Perfect. Sounds great. All right. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Um, okay. And the last thing. Uh, so uh, Maya was saying in the first cohort, something that she found helpful was actually choosing a data set that they use kind of consistently throughout the book for different examples and different concepts that they were learning. So, and they chose, uh, I don't have a link here, but uh, I think it's in the repo, uh, a beer data set. Uh, maybe Tan, you could say a little bit more about that. But, um, but uh, so I just wanted to open it up. I think they actually discussed it like in Slack and voted on it. And, um, and so we don't have to do it right now. But, uh, you know, what do you all think of that? That's a terrific idea. So we work through a data set as we're going through the book. Yeah, it's brilliant. Okay. Yeah, I really like that idea. Um, and I've got a couple of suggestions for uh, data sets. So uh, are we doing it now or in Slack? Uh, you can do it right now and I'll write them down and then uh, I could, I'll kind of let the discussion finish in Slack. Yeah, yeah so, um, so one was uh, coffee ratings. The second one was Palmer penguins. I know that's kind of picking mm -hmm. up. Uh, right now and also the Animal Crossing data set. So sounds like that would be fun. Nice. I don't think I know the Animal Crossing. Were coffee ratings and Palmer, were they, I think they were both on Tidy Tuesday, right? Yeah, they're both on Tidy Tuesday. And I, th I think Animal Crossing was on Tidy Tuesday as oh, well. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah, so that's actually a great point too. I thank you for the suggestions. Also another place you can look to get more is to, are the Tidy Tuesday data sets if you're looking for ideas there. Thanks. Um, appreciate it. Does anyone else have thoughts? I'm good with whatever. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, all right. So, so maybe uh, you know, I'll uh, I'll take these, uh, send them out in Slack, and then um, you know, we'll decide what we want to use and. Um, you know, work through the exercises with it. Um, sound good, everyone? Yep. All right. Great. All right. Um, are we good on time? What time is it? Eight oh six. Okay. All right. So, um, like I mentioned, uh, I find it helpful to have like questions to to consider that you're like kind of trying to answer as you go through a chapter. Um, so I create, I wrote down just from previewing the chapter, kind of a few questions for chapter two. So the second chapter that we're reading for next week is uh, na called names and values. Um, and so these are questions that might help you, uh, you know, focus on different things as you're going through the chapter and um, make sure you're kind of, uh, I guess, getting, doing kind of a check to make sure it's making sense. Um, so uh, I put these in the slides, but I also put them, um, I, I, it hasn't even merged yet, but I put them in the pull request for that GitHub uh, repo. Um, and so I think it'll probably just go like below the schedule uh, for each week. And so, you know, if you find these questions helpful, um, then, you know, it'll be there. Uh, feel free to use them. And then, um, you know, going forward, if someone's going to present, they could also come up with these if they find it helpful or they want to do that. Um, so yeah, so a few, you know, what's the difference between our, an object's name and its values? When you modify a vector, when does a copy occur? Uh, how, how do you check how much space an object, uh, uh, I should say an object occupies? Uh, and what kinds of objects occupy the most in least space? So that's something, you know, that Hadley mentioned in that quote at the beginning, like getting a kind of a, a intuition for what is memory heavy, you know, in R. And then, um, you know, a, a little bit about garbage collection. When does it run and how do you manually, manually clean up memory? So, uh, 
Um, as Tam mentioned, uh, the stuff at the beginning, I guess, doesn't sound, uh, you know, like the most exciting stuff, but uh, I think we'll see how it's like useful as we move forward. Um, okay, uh, anyone have any questions so far? I'm just gonna talk about the next week's uh, presenter. So, oh yeah, uh, last thing. So there's a few resources that might be helpful um, that Maya recommended uh, from the previous cohort. So there's this uh, Happy Git with R um, uh, book, and it kind of talks a lot about how to use Git and GitHub uh, kind of, um, you know, in your workflow and how to, um, you know, uh, use the version control system and pu push and pull and uh, commit and all that good stuff. Um, uh, and then this is the link to the uh, Zerigan presentation uh, template uh, for our markdown that the previous cohort uh, utilized. Um, and so then you can use, and that way you can use our markdown to create your slides uh, for your presentation uh, each week, whoever's presenting. Okay. Um, and I forgot a slide about uh, deciding who presents next week, but uh, I guess I'll open it up now. Is anyone interested in going first uh, to present the content for chapter two for next Thursday? I can if no one else wants to. What's Josh? Cool. Uh, all right. I mean, that would be great if, for me if you wanted if you wanted to take that on. Or, uh, that's that's okay with you. Right. Yep. Should be good. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, and then uh, we could also decide that week three too. Uh, does anyone is anyone interested in doing that one? Yeah, I'll take week three. Okay. All right. So awesome. So Josh. And the rush. Okay, great. Um, okay, and then um, so uh, so yeah, so Josh and uh, Varesh, Varesh, is that you say your name? Yeah, uh, Vajresh. So the J is. Yeah. Oh, Vajresh. Vajresh. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 work on it. Um, uh, boss trash. Okay. Um, so would you, uh, so you all would have, uh, when you have your slides, it'd be great if you could, um, like submit a, a pull request to the repo. And, uh, I, I actually don't know who the maintainers are. Um, but, um, whoever it is, will review it and just add your slide link when you're ready. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, uh, I actually submitted my first uh, pull request uh, uh, to actually in the last two days, uh, but um, I can kind of show you uh, how I did that, um, and or you could just you know talk about it on the on the channel. But um, you all have like experience using Git and and doing pull requests and things like that. That's enough to cause trouble. Okay, awesome, great. Okay, uh, well then uh, yeah. So when whenever you're, I'll. I'll um, uh, what I can do is I'll write down your name in the in the spot uh, within my pull request, and then uh, whenever you have your slides, just paste them, put them in there next to your name, and then uh, sounds like we'll be good. All right. Great. Anyone have anything else uh, before we um, before we end for today? I think that's probably about it for me. All right, and I just want to make sure, Josh uh, and Drakresh, uh, if I have your uh, have your last names, I don't think I see them on the chat. Um, so I could write it on the. If you're okay, I'll just write it on the GitHub. Or maybe I'll just I'll, I could just use your first name. I wrote it into the chat for you. Oh, you did. Okay. Great. Uh, Perfect, perfect, all right, thanks. All right, all right. Uh, well, that's all I have. Um, yeah, it's, it was great to meet you all, and um, you know, I'm really looking forward to this uh, book club and learning a lot from, from you all, and um, 
you know, doing some fun stuff in R. So.